good day so what I'm gonna look at today is what the SBA gonna look like but since we won't have class I'm just gonna try it a little bit virtually so before we get into that I just want you to see what the exam structure should look like now this could change because of the virus as it did last year because last year previous exam that we just had we didn't have any paper too it was just the multiple choice and the SBA so how it normally works Again, we don't know how it works in this year yet. But how it would normally work, you would have paper one. This multiple choice question here, one hour fifty minutes. We have about three to five minutes for that one. So we have about five to go. We have about paper two, which is ten questions. That includes all of them. So over three minutes we have to get it out through the calculator. So that's why we do no class on this one. So either do three basic questions like I show you or a paper three if you're not in a school and you're writing as a private candidate you have to do that paper three so what you don't know about is you can't go to school if some of the papers would have to be paper threes for some subjects because they might be able to have practical stuff we're not sure about that yet we'll see how it goes but I still prepare for SBA and as you'll see some of the SBAs we could do remotely and SBA will be easier than a paper three as well so for the SBA is a structured real world project that we're going to look at that has to utilize maths. So the previous exam was 60%, sorry, 30% and 20%, and they just double everything. So the, the multiple choice is really 60%, and the SBA was 40%. At least that's what they would have said, right? So we're going to see how the SBA would work. So this is the rubric that they use for the SBA. So the SBA. you have a project title and you have the marks for it so we use something just like this when we mark in the SP the introduction is worth four marks in total and these are how the marks are broken down and these are the things we have to look for when we mark in it it must have a metadata collection that's how much marks is worth and so on Present presentation of data is the most marks at five marks and we have our analysis so all of these are heading points that you have when you take in your SP project the SP project And then once you use proper grammar and spelling, it's laid out properly as it should be, you get two marks for overall presentation. So once you don't have no big set of mistakes in it, you get those two marks for a total of 20. So each mark you get is basically a point for your entire final grade. So now we broke up the questions and we're going to look at each one of those questions. So we have the project title, which is just one mark. Project title is not just telling the reader what your project is all about. It should be clear to the points and discussing the real world problem that you get in SBA based on. So as some sample examples here, what I did is I actually pull in these from previous students SBAs and they have this thing called plagiarism that these SBAs are already in the system. So when they get an SBA they run it against a whole set that in the system and if it have too much similarities to that SBA it's going to be flagged and looked at in comparison to that next one. So that's why you can just take somebody else's SBA and use it. Similarly, all these examples are showing, you have to come up with something that is your own. These are just here as guidelines. So I just showing you what some um, project title is going to look like. An investigation into the higher purchase prices for a refrigerator at three stores in Princess So you realize for all of them, it starts off with an investigation. And you can even see it for the next one here. All of them starting off with an investigation into something. This one is on higher purchase. This one is on financing. It's just showing up alone. Um, this one, you can see, it's something that you do on your own as well. And we'll discuss topics as well. But here, our project title is just an investigation into what you might want to be doing if that nice way to start. So these are the words, but those are some nice ways to start it. And pieces of these SBAs will be explained below. So that's what the project title would look like. So even though the project title is the first part of the SBA, should really start at the introduction. The introduction is four marks. And the introduction is really to introduce to the reader in a paragraph or two what you're really going to be doing. So it's always nice to tell a little story when you're doing it, and you'll see it in some of the sample examples below. But you have to say 
what it is you're doing and if you have a topic you mention the topic there that you'll be looking at and that will be two marks for telling a nice story or introducing your public your, your introduction well your topic well it must also have something called objective the next word for objective is a aim a goal, goal a purpose of the project and again these are just different words you could use because you don't want to, everybody to see the objective of this project so you could use objective of the project aim of the project goal of the SBA, purpose of the assignment you could use different words to make it all different right and it's something more specific is a question you ask in that will be answered in your conclusion that's one mark for that and again you'll see it all better when you go through the examples the last mark out of the four marks in your introduction coming from the table of contents so the table of contents is normally done last it's an easy mark to get just make sure and label your pages you put on the table of contents outside has to correspond with the page that the line if your introduction is page one and the front of mark page one and the introduction mark page one if your present presentation are data on page six then it should have a six day and in the bulletin to the page six it should have the heading presentation and data so let's see what some sample introduction is going to look like again please do not reuse these so, due to recent occurrences of low voltage, our refrigerator has malfunctioned. So, her refrigerator, she's setting up the story already. She refrigerates a spoil. The family requires a new one because they have no way to store their food. But the parents don't have the money to buy a new one. So, therefore, they have to look at that other option of purchasing the item. And that option is a application. So, here, my topic is the most popular and simplest topic to do. Students do something with money, as you'll see a little bit later. So, since I mentioned higher purchase, you have to assume whoever reading this knows nothing about it. So, she goes on to define higher purchase. So, she looked up online or in a textbook and get the definition for higher purchase. However, wherever she got that definition, she has to cite it or state where she gets it from, and we put that citation in something called the references, which is one of the last sections in your SBA. So, you can't just pull stuff from anywhere. If you're pulling it from somewhere not to cause any plagiarism you have to cite where you get it from so at the back she will see where she get this definition from she also said she covered this topic in her maths class and now she got to help her parents with it so that was her two marks story there you realize it's nothing too big and fancy she set up her story why she want to do it um what topic she choose and she defined the topic and now this is her purpose statement the real reason she's doing the sba so if i just go back up this related to this one here by the way so this would have been her introduction here an investigation into the higher purchase prices for a refrigerator at three stores in princess town and now this is the introduction to go along with that so her aim again you could have used aim or objective or purpose of this assignment or project or sba you pick which words you want to mix and match is to determine which of the three chosen stores has the most affordable higher purchase price. So this is really what her SBA is about. The project title is just a kind of dry version of this. She's studying something. She wants to know which, um, if you look back at the project title for this. From investigation into the higher purchase prices for a refrigerator at three stores in Princess Tongue. And now for the introduction, she specifically wants to look at which of these three stores that she going to purchase the refrigerator from because she's shopping around now she didn't just go in one store and say hey i believe you are the best price she shopped around at three stores and she wants to know which are the three stores offering her the best deal on that refrigerator the most affordable higher purchase plan this is the next one again you can retreat yourself same idea he also was doing higher purchase the story is TV got stolen, he wants to buy back a new TV, but he don't have enough money. So again, he has a different definition. If you notice, he got this definition somewhere else or just cited as something different in the back. And he also has a different objective. His objective is to determine which are the two stores, because he visited two stores, offering a better higher purchase plan, and he was more specific with his item. It wasn't just a refrigerator like the last one, he wants a specific size and brand of his television next one this one again just to show you a different introduction this one using a car. 
and to buy a car because Galil hard at work and traveling not making sense to him so you're going to use financing financing that means dealerships offering his financing he defined it here and the aim specifically of his investigation now is to determine realize all of them kind of have a similar feel to it. the aim of this investigation is to determine which car dealership offering the most economical in other words a fancy word for cheapest financing option that will best suit his current budget because it could be the cheapest but does it suit his budget because sometimes they might be able to afford it all do have to be with money though some could be statistical in nature so this was one where students did their own SBA right they came up with their own thing so in this one, at my school, we spend a lot of lunch for one hour. However, many students spend lengthy periods of time waiting to purchase from the school's cafe and cause them to miss out on some parts of the lunch that they would have chosen. So this is there. So this is the story, the introduction. This is the purpose statement or objective that contains all of the parts of the introduction here. In this investigation, we will determine the average wait time, sorry, average time that students spend waiting to be served at the cafeteria on a given day. We we'll then use statistics to present and analyze our data collected. We also hope to provide ideas to lessen this average wait time. So some things to keep in mind, whatever your site or get information from, especially with definitions, whether it's from a textbook or online, you have to put that research in your references. And you'll see what the references look at when we reach that section. We're still on the introduction. So while we're still on the introduction, I just want you to think about what you might want to do. So my Suggestion is, is usually money because it's simple, the maths part simple, especially for the money topics. So that's why I have for money because it's a lot harder to write. So any money topic, high approaches, taking a loan from the bank, a car loan, or whether you're taking a car loan from a specific company, it could be the simplest and the highest approaches, but you have other options that could limit yourself to money topics. However, given all the viruses at this time, these will actually be a little simpler to do as well because you could always call or message courts or standards or the bank and you might be able to get the data and not have to physically go in. Um, so that should be a little easier to do, especially with higher purchase. You could message on one of the social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, because all of them have a lot of social media. So you could reach out to them and get the numbers that you need. Sometimes they're even online at the store. Sometimes they also would be on the papers, right? You could always say that you interviewed somebody and get it as well. You could have some statistic based options as well. So just some examples. Um, if you're into sports, these you have to go online to get them though and it will be a little issue to cite properly where you get them. But just to give you an example, uh, who you think is a better player between Messi and Ronaldo and then you'll go to try and back up your data with how much goals or assists they would have scored over a period of time, who's the better penalty taker, and you can also pull up the data over the past few years to see what percentage of the penalty kicks they scored, or it could be something else for a different sport, basketball, cricket, and those will have to make use of stuff like mean, mode, median, and that kind of stuff, how much hat-tricks they score and how much games they played, all those different kind of things you could do, but it could get a little messy and it's a little harder to focus and then to get the info and cite it properly as well. Also, we could have topics related to your own investigation, such as what we was doing, the one with the average wait time in the cafeteria that I would do the last introduction for. So I'll give you some examples, how much students are late or absent from school on a given day of the week. Are students more likely to be absent on Friday or late on Friday as opposed to Monday. Or you could do some stuff with the COVID that's going on right now. The problem with this first part is, you can't in, um, interview or survey anybody because you're not really going to do that when you're not in school right now. But you could have other things. You could have a virtual survey as well, possibly. Or you could do some stuff with the, the COVID um, as well, just to see uh, if you could get some statistical stuff out of that, like how much the cases rise in a particular month or something like that as well. But again, I just was showing you other options. This would be my suggestion up here with Consumer Arithmetic. They have other topics, so whoever seen this, discuss with your teacher and they will guide you accordingly. Right, so in the next sections, I would look at the other parts.